Peace and love, family. It's your boy Corbin reporting live once again. It's a beautiful day. I'm all about nostalgia. I'm all about nostalgia. If it makes you feel good, go for it. But this video, a shout out to all my people in New Orleans. All my people in Baton Rouge. The time is now. I told y'all before that I was planning on doing a story about my experience in New Orleans post-Katrina in 2005, I believe it was. In 2005, exactly. August 29th, I believe, is when Katrina happened. Ironically enough, it's the same birthday as the legend Michael Jackson, Snapple Facts. But anyway, about three or four weeks after Katrina happened, I traveled to New Orleans and had amazing experience. It was history. I'm going on the 15th anniversary of that. And trust me, I had so many experiences, so many life-changing great times and even little trials and tribulations for those who know the story of, of, of me going to New Orleans post-Katrina. Um, met a lot of wonderful people there. Matter of fact, this is why I do stuff like YouTube because I, people like my boy Jay from Atlanta. I got my boy K Deuce from Texas. I'm hoping one day they see this YouTube and we link up again, man. It was my big brothers down there, man. My big brothers down there. Hurricane Trina. 2005, it was crazy down there. You walk in the streets out there in, um, in Berber Street, you walk in Berber Street or Canal Street, you can still smell the, the stench of death in the air. Real shit. I remember, um, cause this, I mean, it is what it is. New Orleans, that experience was just like a movie for me. That's why I want to get everybody together. To, uh, my classmates that I went there with, shout out to y'all and the people that I met while I was there. Most definitely shout out to y'all. Because it was a movie, people, being down there. I mean, Hurricane Katrina just happened. Major respect to Louisiana as a state and the people. Because through all the stuff, the hurricanes, the deaths, the floods, the innocent murders by the police, let's not even, we will talk about that. Because when I went down there, it was martial law. And I'm from the Eastern Shore, y'all. Shout out to the Eastern Shore all day. So, you know, country slash city boy is what I call myself. But, you know, some will argue this is country. This is city. It is what it is. But much love anyway. But um, coming from here, you know, we wild and crazy too. But Louisiana, that's a different type of wild and crazy. That I've never seen before. I always heard about, you know, like I said, growing up, listen to the Hot Boys, Cash Money, Master P, shout out to Master P, Brian Slim, legends. Like, you, we already know how Louisiana was, or we heard about it, through, and we seen it through TV, but when you experience it, it's real. Because the first thing I got to say, the people down there, Southern hospitality, for real. I love y'all people down there. I mean, like the people born and, born and bred there, born and bred. You know, when I was down there, I was out there in the Ninth Ward. But shout out to my Eighth Ward and my Ninth Ward people. They treat me like family down there. You hear me? They treat me like family down there. And uh, St. Claude, I was out in Ninth Ward, St. Claude. Man, I never knew what martial law was. Or oh, I heard of martial law, excuse me. But I did not know why I was there. That the state was in martial law. And for those who don't know what martial law is, I can't even give you the full definition. I'd probably fuck it up. But for what I know what martial law is, like I said, you know, there's going to be people who, you know, they want to be scientists. They want to be political. They want to be politically correct on YouTube and on the uh, social media. This is what it's for, for you to state your opinion. It is what it is. But for me, martial law is what I know it is to be is pretty much when... It's a state of emergency. It's the government really does. The government takes over, and when the government really takes over, 
it's an all for all for all. You can best believe that the local police, of, you know, what I'm trying to say the local police and the local authorities are going to run amok as well. So I can't give you the straight definition of what martial law is, but what I can tell you from what I experienced, it's when there's a state of emergency, the government pretty much gives the police the authority to do whatever the fuck they want to. We had police down there that was talking about, we can kill you and get away with it. They said that to us. We can kill you and get away with it. And it wasn't no joke an hour. There was many times in New Orleans, I thought I was on an episode of Punk. You cannot tell me that Ashton Kutcher wasn't about to come out around that motherfucker. But it was real down there. You feel what I'm saying? And the things that the people went through down there was hardly documented. Let's get that understood first. You know? So. Man. So at the end of the day, the movie has to be made. Because there's so much more to the movie that has to be told. So much more to the story that has to be told. But I definitely want to get a lot of people that was there with me. And I say shout out to a lot of my people who know the story and a lot of people who know that it was great times and it was a learning experience for me. You know, um, and while I'm at I want to give a shout out to, um, since I'm talking about making this a movie, I want to give a shout out to um, my people out there in Riverside Cosmo, my big bro Jason, everybody in Riverside, California, much respect to y'all because y'all show me love from the door. Thank you. Like, y'all show me love. I haven't even got a chance to step in there yet, but I'm stepping in the Riverside, man, with y'all love and respect, man, for real. Thank y'all for that. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I definitely want to make a movie, and I'm going to make I am going to make a movie. Let's not forget about our I am's speaking into existence. I am going to make that a movie. I want to make that a, a, a book first and maybe a movie, but if it's so damn good and somebody got interest, got interest in it, I'm going to make it a movie straight, you know. But... Just walking, walking by the stores, family. Shout out to West Bank and East Bank as well. But just walking by the stores, I mean, there was like sneaker stores that, you know, glass was, the glass was broken. You can literally walk in there and grab me some Jordans and keep it moving. It was just like that. But, nah, you know, I'm good. I was good. But um, I just can't stop thinking about the people there. I mean, like, y'all talking about Southern hospitality for real? <sighs> Man, like the folks there, it was love. It's love. It was, I mean, it was funny because they didn't know what Scrapple was. You know, I'm, I think I always thought Scrapple was a world. I thought everybody knew what Scrapple was. So imagine me coming from the Eastern Shore and, you know, they got pole boys, they got all the good Southern, all the Cajun, all the Creole, all that. I, uh, if y'all never been to New Orleans, please go. But, um, where, 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 sometimes I, you know, I, all the thoughts and comes so much, I forget what I'm saying sometimes, but it always comes back. Sometimes y'all can help me through conversation and whatnot. So if you ever see me lose it, the topic, if y'all know where I was going with it, say it, I promise you through mental telepathy it'll work. So let's hope it works now. But once again, the people, I think is what I was talking about. The people of New Orleans, you know, they didn't know what Scrapple was. That's where we was with it. They didn't know what Scrapple was. They didn't know what it was. So I'm trying to def tell these people, like, uh, y'all don't know what Scrapple was? Well, you know, it's the, the pig ass, uh, the pig guts, and all parts of the, of the pig combined in one to make a good ass breakfast. Now, as disgusting as that sound, God damn it, the Scrapple was just even telling them about it. Maybe you just want some scrapple with some syrup on that. But yeah, but I mean, you can go to, probably go to New Orleans with some scrapple and make a killer. But you ain't that for me though. No. But um, the love there, you know, I got a chance to, um, oh man, and if you were party at the clubs, it's amazing down there, man. You just, I don't want to give everything away because it's a wonderful experience down there. The people are awesome and it's history all over. Um, the parts I was in mostly was around the um, Bourbon Street area where I worked at. Shout out to the Bourbon House. Shout out to the Bourbon House. Uh, shout out to Chris Owens. That was a club down there, you know. You know, I got to tell this story. I went to Chris Owens. Me, K-Doos, shout out to K-Doos, Jay. Uh, 
a Spanish homeboy, shout out to him. Uh, you know, we just walk in the strip, man, just walk in the strip. And uh, I think I've been to Chris Owens. One, this is before I'm actually about to leave to head to Tampa, Florida. Shout out to Tampa. And we go to Chris Owens. Well, the first experience with Chris Owens was amazing. I go in there. The second one was too, but I got to tell you about the first one. The first time I go in there and smoke all in the air. I'm 20 years old at this time, people. I'm 20 years old in 2005. The fact that I was in a club at all, I mean, well, here it's, it's always 21 when it got liquor, but you know, sometimes. So I go in there and, the, the, you know, at this time I had the Lil Wayne CD of the Suffix. This is when Lil Wayne the Suffix out. Great mixtape, by the way. And I'm bumping that and, you know, at the time he had a song on there, where you from? No one leaves. Yeah, and I'm, I still remember working at the Bourbon House. You know, uh, it was dishwasher. It was paying good though, folks. It was paying good. Um, with the headphones on, talk about nostalgia. I'm in New Orleans in Bourbon House, bumping the new Wayne. Where you from? New Orleans, in New Orleans. Like, it's got to be like the same as bumping uh, Rick Ross Amsterdam while while being in Amsterdam. Shout out to you, Ross. Boss. But um, just just walking. There's so many memories, people. So I just I drift off and on because it's as I'm talking, I'm living it at the same time. I'm reliving it. But Chris Owens, the club was lit in more ways than one. And I remember going to the DJ like. I got this mixtape. I got this new Wayne. Play this. Play this. He's real cool. I don't. I don't. I don't think he even had it. It, it was. It was so new. I had it so new. It was exclusive. The new new. But um, I go straight. I mean, we all go straight in the back, man. It's, it's mad deep. It, it's looking like something out of a Hot Boys video. I can't lie. Five oh four boys. And I remember it was these girls. Man, they they were sitting. It was three of them. Boom, boom, it was all lined up. And it was like, we was right behind them. You know, we sitting back chilling. And no lie, family, I cannot make this up. Juvenile's uh, Back That Ass came on. And you know how, to, how it starts off. Do, 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 do. No lie. By the time the, the end of the Duke came and Manny drops that, ch -ch, those three girls got up and did the the famous, I don't know if you can call it twerk because it's, it's original, you know. You know, twerking is twerking, but back in New Orleans, what, them, what they doing? You know, like Frida, Big Frida, and, and, and you know, they, they showing y'all what, what they do down there. Yeah, they was doing that. And I'm sitting back like, oh! It was it was it was beautiful. It was it was a beautiful thing. So shout out to New Orleans all day. We definitely going to make that a movie. It's going to be a movie. It's going to be beautiful, you know. So at the end of the day, I don't know. It's just what it is, people. You know, we do these videos, and we tell y'all to continue to live your life. Because at the end of the day, you got to continue to do you. Cannot expect everybody to be jumping on your bag wagon as soon as you find success, or as soon as you find something that makes you feel good. Trust me. God, I cannot remember uh, the quote in um, in the Bible, but I'm sure the people who are the Bible thumpers and the ones who are the scholars of the Bible, you know what I'm saying. But Jesus, and I, once again, I can't. I'm paraphrasing here, but it's you will go outside your comfort zone, your land, where you're from, and you will find so much love everywhere. Like I said, when I went to Egypt, it was I, the love there. You can't, it, it, it's, it's, it has to be the essence of what spiritual love means. Like when you first meet somebody, that love, that's the, the pureness I was, I, was, I was brought here for. But everywhere, but when you come, back to where you're from. That love ain't the same. It's the people that know you, the people that grew up with you. That's the ones, that's the ones. 
But even with saying that, even with saying that, they ain't meant to be a problem. They're not meant to be an issue because if you know you, <laughs> you're in a matrix anyway, it's nothing but an obstacle. One of the biggest things I learned through this journey that I've been through is that the struggle, the pain, the suffering that we all suffer and go through on a daily, that is the cord that will bring you to your success. You understand what I'm saying? Like those trials and tribulations that we talk about, that we know that we gotta overcome, that's what makes you stronger. We say it so many times, but yet we still go through it. You know? Accepting your greatness is something you gotta do for you to overcome all the, all the other bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So you cannot waste time. And I gotta say this again, this is very important. You cannot waste time on trying to wait on people or try to wait for a person's acceptance. That's first. Because once you found that greatness in yourself, you gotta keep going. There ain't no stopping now. Like I tell people, yeah, I claim God. I am God. I, this, that's, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're past that. But understand, with me claiming that, I can't go back to where I was. I can't go back to the state I was in. You know what I'm saying? I can't go back and say, oh, gee, Jesus. <laughs> Man, I, look, I, I was on some bullshit. You know. You know, you do forgive all sins. This wipe is clean, man. I'm, I'm right back there Sunday. Nah, that's definitely not happening. That's damn for sure not happening. Because once you find that God or that God is my sisters in you, it ain't no stopping. You cannot go back. You got to stand on yours. And it's a hard road, but it's a great road to go to. Pay attention to your dreams, people. Pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to them thoughts that you always ignore. The biggest thing I learned as I'm getting older is the same thing I knew as a kid. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us accept the greatness that they are. Some of us, we make excuses. I had a great conversation with my mom about that. That's why I'll forever love her. Because some people you need in your life to set you straight. To tell you what you don't want to hear. That's the people I love being around. I love constructive criticism. Real shit. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I'm here right now. That's why the YouTube's is popping off. That's why the music is popping off. You feel what I'm saying? That's why the, the trips is popping off. Because I accepted my greatness. Despite what anybody may think. Despite what anybody may think and I advise you to do the same because at the end of the day people we are here to be great I told you this planet is a school it's a school and we're in all different classes you have your class I have my class when I go to the dream world and travel to the astral planet yeah, I know it's about to sound real crazy for you, but it is what it is. Shout out to my people out there who really know what I'm about to talk about. But when I travel to the astral planet and the astral realm, man, it's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother ball game. The Kashi libraries have been given to me. That's the records for God, that's the God of records. The records, the library, the records of God that knows any and everything we have done, past, present, and future. It's still, it's still hard for people to grasp the fact that you have been here before when there are so, so many books. And damn right, I read a lot of books, people. And I'm proud of it. It's nothing I look down on. It's nothing that makes me think I'm more or even less than anybody, but I read. And in 2019, that people still look at anybody for the way that, let me just say this. 
there are so many different lifestyles that are accepted in today's society. Listen carefully. There are so many different lifestyles that are accepted in today's society. But why is it that spirituality is just, till this day, deemed on? Witchcraft deemed upon. Shamans. I know some real shamans. Fuck that bullshit, y'all don't. That, that, that. Witchcraft, shamans, voodoo, Santeria. Why do y'all look down upon this when this is older than the work that you even know? Hmm? Fairies, demons, gods, goddesses, gnomes, mermaids. Mm. Hold up, Corbin. You getting them now. Hold up, Corbin. Mm. So at the end of the day, people, 2012, somebody made a good point one time. I think it was Brother Panic. My teacher is Brother Panic. Brother, ah, Brother Hemet, Phil Valentine's, huh? These brothers are still doing the work. Brother, def most definitely Brother Panic and Dr. Phil. Shout out to Baba. Shout out to Baba Hemet, wherever you are. Much respect to you as well. These are the ones that have brought us to where we are now. And the ones before those, of course, you already knew who they are. Dr. Dr. Clark, Dr. Benz, uh, Malachi Z, all, all those, the great ones. 2020 means what? Perfect vision. 2020 means perfect vision. Remember that before I leave. So make sure your vision is right. I used to say this. Start your life. I said this years ago. Start your life. Look at life with a double lens. Then start your life where trouble ends. Peace and love, family. It's your boy Corbin. You know what it is. I'll be talking to y'all.